Hey everyone, welcome back to Coding Monk. I'm Hiren and on this channel we make coding and tech easier for developers of all levels. Today we are going to tackling something exciting, deploying your fast API application to DigitalOcean using their app platform. If you have been waiting to get your fast API project live in the cloud, this is the perfect guide for you. We'll go step by step through the process from setting up your code to deploying it on DigitalOcean managed platform so you can get your application running in no time. Before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you are always in the loop when I drop a new tutorial like this. So, alright, let's get started. So, first thing first, if you are new to the DigitalOcean platform, you'll need to connect your GitHub, Bitbucket or any source code provider with the DigitalOcean. As you know, I have already deployed my Laravel and Node.js application to the DigitalOcean, so we don't need to do that. But if you haven't done yet, you'll need to do it once. So, let me create an app onto the app platform. And I will need to select my GitHub repository here. So this is the repository I have created to deploy or test it out fast API deployment onto the DigitalOcean. So if I open the source code, so this application contains two routes. One is the root route and one is the items route. And I want to test it out with this. I have created this requirement.txt file which contains all my fast API dependency. If I go to readme file, I also mentioned that to run this application into production, will need to run fast API run command once all these dependencies are installed. So you can use this boilerplate. It's not much into this boilerplate. It's just a starter kit. It doesn't contain anything like uh, authentication or database connection. It's just a sample project which contains two routes. So for the educational purpose, I have not created anything into this boilerplate or uh, repository, but you can just check this out if you want to deploy. So let me select this repository to the DigitalOcean platform. And I want to select this auto deploy option because whenever there is change pushed into my repository, I want it to deploy to this deployment, right? So that's why I'm selecting this auto deploy. If you don't want to do that, you can uncheck this and manually build this application as well. In next step, you can choose the instance size and some configuration of your project and deployment. So let me change the name of this project. I think this is fine. Fast API test project. This is basically a web service, Python web service, which will be always running. I want to select the instance size as well. And if you are selecting a larger instance, you will also have an option to auto scale. So you can specify how many containers you want to run. Also, if you want to auto scale, then you will need to specify various monitoring parameters. For example, if CPU threshold exceeds 70%, then how many containers you want to spin up to, right? You can specify minimum number of containers as well as maximum number of containers if CPU threshold exceeds 70%. But I don't want to do that for this specific deployment. So I'm selecting just $5 a month instance size and I will save it. Also, my application will be running on 8000 port. So I'm writing 8000 here and save it. And this is my base route. And let's go back. If you want to add any other resource, for example, if your application contains database and you want that database to be hosted on digital oceans, managed database services, then you can add additional resources as well. But for now, I'm not going to do that. And next, if you want to add any environment variables in current project, I don't have any environment variables, right? But if you have any environment variables, you can specify here. So you can use this bulk editor to add your all the environment variable, which is in .n file or any other environment file, or you can manually add one by one as well. If you want to encrypt those environment variable, you can do that as well. This is the last step. If you want to change the name of your application, then also you can do that. And in DigitalOcean, if you have any projects and you want to add this deployment or app into that specific project, you can select the project from here as well. And I'm selecting Bangalore as my region, but if you want, then you can also select other region as well. So I'm going with the Bangalore and hitting this next button and I will see all the different configuration onto my last page, review page. And I'll click on to this create resources button. So it will start creating all the resources needed immediately, right? So let's see, it's currently building my application. So it will create basically a container and in that container, my application will be added and that container will be deployed, right? So under the hood, DigitalOcean uses containerized environment and which is really easy to scale up and scale down. And I think that's a really good benefit of deploying your application on DigitalOcean, right? So let's wait for a few minutes and our application should be deployed on DigitalOcean. So my build is completed. Now we are waiting for the service to be deployed onto the platform. All right, I think 
we have mm -hmm. missed one step i guess so it's not being able to deploy so let me go to the settings and we'll need to specify the command to run this application as well so if i go to this application and see here i can specify the command which needs to be run so let me specify fast api run command and that command basically will run my application in production mode so again it will start building so as you can see this deployment was failed because i haven't specified the command to run the application it should run now meanwhile this deployment happens let's go through some properties for example once this application is deployed if you want to point your own custom domain to this application you can specify custom domain as well but i think you'll need to wait for your application to be deployed you can specify environment variable you can also add alert policies basically what is alert policy is like you want any notification when some events happen then you can specify those alert policies here for example when deployment starts you want email to be sent on your email then you can also enable this alert policy so i have enabled it for failed deployments as well as failed domain configuration and these are the two default policies added when you are creating a platform app you can also forward your logs to the various log providers for example if you want your logs to be added into open source or datadog or logtail you can configure that so you will need to set all this parameter like where your open source node is and you'll need to specify id password or credentials for that and you can specify this destination as your log manager i think these are the all different configuration which you can basically do our application is deployed so let's click on to this live app or you can also click here to access your application and here it is and it's showing me the base route hello world and it's responding with the json my second route is items item id so if i go to items one it will also give me this response so that's it i think it's super easy to deploy your fast api application to the laravel cloud or app platform i think it's been just few minutes to deploy this application and it's up and running and even it's really easy to scale your application onto the digital ocean platform right so this is all about deploying your fast api application to the digital oceans app platform in just few minutes right if you like this video please click on to the like button if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to my channel i would really appreciate it and hit the bell icon so you can get all the updates of my new videos and new series thank you so much for watching this video have a great day